Good morning. Good morning, everybody. All right, let's have a little bit better week this week. Sorry for the echo. Um, there we go. All right. Yeah, guys, it's like 40 degrees here in uh, Houston. It is like 40 degrees here in April. What is going on? Why is it so cold still? What's up, Jay, Rich, Netron, Bill, all, Gary? Good morning. He's all right, Bill. Uh, we brought him to the, the, the emergency room thing, but it wasn't, like I said in the Discord, it wasn't like a huge emergency. We just wanted to get it checked out. My wife's kind of going crazy now because it's like, he has like one thing after another, after another, after another, and it never seems to get better. And honestly, though, I remember with my daughter that she always had a cough. And I think that's just kind of how kids are, but I think my wife takes it to heart too much and uh, just kind of panics about it. And so, but they did, they did an x-ray on him and he, uh, he had some streaking in his lungs. They said it could be due to allergies. It could be due to asthma, which he has. He has, uh, he has asthma. And so they said he's all right, but hopefully, uh. Hopefully it goes away. Uh, like I was saying in the Discord, I don't think the weather here helps. You know, one day it's like 75 degrees outside. It's warm. And then the next day it's like 40. And then it just kind of switches every other day. Until you don't know what kind of... You don't know whether to wear a jacket or short sleeves. But I appreciate the... Uh, I appreciate the thought, Bill. Thanks, man. This morning, we're looking at uh, ADXS. Yeah, for sure. Weather, it plays a bigger part than people realize. Um, like, I know, I don't know if I'm sick now, but, like, I woke up yesterday with, like, uh, like just congestion. And I'm pretty sure it's just allergy-related from the weather changing, you know, is what I'm pretty sure it is I'm pretty that I'm I think that's probably what was wrong with my son too and I think my wife just panicked but yeah the weather has to stay stable you know if not the pollen it's really it's the pollen right now there's lots of pollen out and that's making everybody's allergies flare up but my son unfortunately like uh I'm not allergic to anything that I know of um not anything that I actually know of, you know, I've never had like a adverse re uh, reaction from anything. Uh, my wife, on the other hand, is like allergic to everything, you know, she's allergic to like oak and pollen and cats and dogs and, and all this different stuff. And so we were hoping that my son would take after me and not be allergic to anything. And we just wouldn't have to worry about allergies or asthma or anything like that. Unfortunately, it seems like he took after my wife and, uh, you know, we have to give him nebulizer, breathing treatments and like, um, inhalers and stuff. And so he unfortunately has more allergies than I do. Probably closer to how my wife is. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but like my take on it, and I'm probably wrong, but my take on it is like you just have to expose the kids to it, you know? Like most allergies are from a lack of exposure to the environment, and so if you keep kids away from stuff, naturally their bodies are going to be a little bit more sensitive to certain things. So like if they never see animals, if they never like are around cats or dogs – they're going to react worse to cats or dogs, or if they're never around, you know, alert pollen and stuff like that, they're going to react worse. Hold on, guys. <clears throat>
All right, guys, I'll be right back. I gotta go. My we forgot my son's backpack. Uh, I gotta go bring my, my uh, his backpack out so my wife can get it. All right, I'm back. But yeah, it's cold. Ooh, man. It is absolutely cold. Um, what's up, two-way? Siesta says, yep, that's why nurses and doctors aren't sick all the time, even though they are exposed to germs constantly. Yeah, and it makes sense why. Like, listen, like, I lived with my dad some growing up, and my dad had so many different animals like my dad was a falconer and so he raised falcons and we had like three dogs and a bunch of cats and hamsters and i had pet snakes and like we had all these different animals and uh growing up my sister had some type of like asthma when she was really young but eventually by the time she turned like 10 she wasn't allergic to anything because we had so many animals at our house and so you know, whenever I'm kind of the one that's like, hey, well, Jack just needs to be exposed. My son just needs to be exposed to all this different stuff. And so he builds up some immunity to it and he's not allergic to it anymore. But um, my wife disagrees. <laughs> all right, two-way, what's up, man? Morning Squawk, U.S. futures were higher this morning after a Friday surge that ended a profitable first quarter for Wall Street's bulls. The S&P 500 conducted its best or concluded its best first quarter since 1998 and its largest overall quarterly gain since the third quarter of 2009. First one, like I was saying, ADXS looks interesting. Uh, gapping up from 590s to 815s, pretty significant percentage gap up there. Um, so ADXS in combination with Keytruda,
prolonged survival in metast uh, metast uh, for some reason I can't pronounce this metastatic Met metastatic I'm just gonna say metastatic I know it's metastasized but for some reason it's too early to pronounce that word this morning. Uh, CYCC present, uh, presented at the presented phase one data of their SAPA side. I can usually pronounce these well. I think it's just too early. Regimen in patients with BRCA mutant breast cancer at AACR 2019. Interesting. Um, so this one, I think I've talked about it before, but my wife actually has the uh, BRCA2 gene. So my wife actually has the BRCA2 gene. Uh, the BRCA2 gene, and uh, you know we're right around MD Anderson, and she's actually had a, a double mastectomy, um, and so it's interesting if they're building stuff to like combat that. FTFT future fintech inter security purchase agreement. Let's see FTFT. I don't think I've looked at that one yet. KZIA, low volume, they presented positive Cantrixil uh, phase one data at AACR conference. We got MNKD, which is gapping up a little bit here. Um, they received a $12.5 million milestone payment from United Therapeutics. Like I said, we have the bottom chart, uh, SELB, which they initiated head-to-head -head clinical trials of SEL212 versus CR, or Christosexa and patients with chronic refractory gout and strengthens management team. Um, so interesting, positive news for SELB. We'll see where that one heads. Uh, sorrel, sorrel gapping up some from 280s to 330s. Um, they had a record 20% annual sales increase in 2018. We also have WORX gapping up a little bit here. Appreciate it two-way. Thanks, brother. Appreciate the uh, news today, man. Uh, but WRX announced that a $1.25 million contract from the number one ranked healthcare provider. We got ZIOP, which is gapping up a little bit here. So, yeah, we'll see where those go. Appreciate it two-way. Thanks, brother. All right, guys. Oh, so yeah, programmers here. Um, so I've been learning JavaScript. I've learned Python for the most part. I still have some work to do with, you know, a lot of programming actually revolves around problem solving. And I think that's what I have to ultimately condition my brain to kind of do a little bit more. Uh, but I did start learning JavaScript. It's the newest language I'm starting to learn. Um, <clears throat> I will say this though, nothing against Python, but I've enjoyed writing JavaScript a lot more. I think it's because, uh, I think it's mostly due to the fact that Python is very strict with indentation and syntax. Um, like I said, I think, I think Python is so strict with indentation and syntax that JavaScript is a welcomed language to learn because I can space it however I want. The spacing doesn't have to be exact. I can indent however I want and just start a new 
line anywhere I want without it actually affecting the program. So I'm actually enjoying learning JavaScript. But I honestly feel like JavaScript is probably one of the more used coding languages, and so it makes sense to learn that one next. That's kind of why I'm doing it. All right, guys, it is 9.01 market time. What's everybody's main watch today? Yeah, like I said, ADXS, PULM, moving some. I remember PULM, but yeah, ADXS, EVOK is moving some. I remember EVOK as well, so check out EVOK. It is starting to run a little bit here. We also have um, some of these other ones moving. Yeah, I'll definitely watch AMRN. Uh, I'm going to watch Lyft today as well. So if you guys remember, Lyft ended up IPOing at $88.60. Which I'm sorry, I just feel like it's a little bit too high here. Um, you know, I feel like maybe they had, like, you know, some people were saying that Lyft actually had losing, uh, losing last year. You know, I don't know. Here's the thing. I don't know enough about it to really say. I think, I, I think it's probably going to head down. But who knows, man. I know they just made a ton of money by making their company public. They did beat Uber out of the gate. I still think they're probably going to drop, but, and they ended up just tanking after they opened up, but they did IPO pretty high, all things considered, and so, we'll see what happens with Lyft. Does anybody know when Uber's going to IPO as well? I think that'll be interesting to watch. G-E-V-O. On TEFs and TradeNet, I can short it immediately, Rich. So, like, that's one of the benefits of TEFs and TradeNet. A lot of people talk bad about them, but one of the benefits is that I can short... I could have shorted this thing as soon as it opened uh, Friday. You know? And so, that's one of the positives about... About... Uh, Tefs and TradeNet is that I can short anything that's tradable, and uh, it was tradable, so, you know. Let's make sure, so you can see here, I can pull this up, and you can see if I type in, it's tradable, it's shortable, so I can short it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to, I mean, I don't know enough about it, you know, I'm not really a fundamental investor or a swing trader, and so... You know, it did kind of fade as soon as it opened up yesterday, but it still opened up much higher than most people thought, and so it's kind of mixed to, for me. Um, but didn't they have a losing, didn't they lose money last year? It's just tough to say. What's up, George? What's up, man? I mean, here's the thing, though, right? Like, this is... A... So, Lyft is still losing money, technically, you know? They are improving significantly overall, but they're still technically losing money. Which is probably why they're going public. It's probably why they're going public. And so a lot of uh, analysts are saying they are on the path to profitability. But, you know, we'll see. I mean, who knows? All speculation for me at this point. Who knows what it's going to do. Yeah, Lyft netted a $900 million loss 
last year. Yeah, I mean, that's probably why they're going public. Um, Tech said, yeah, I, I saw that in the in the Discord. Tech, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. Um, listen, man, I'm not. I don't want to tell you what to do, or I don't want to dissuade you from making any trades that you want to make. You know what I mean? I'm not. Uh, I don't want to tell you what to do or how to trade or anything like that. I just know from my experience, one of my rules is that I do not trade IPOs on IPO day as day traders. I think day trading IPOs is really risky. They usually have a huge range on IPO day. And so it's hard to tell exactly what you're risking. Um, and so I've, I've lost three times what you did tech trading IPOs years ago and it's kind of one of my rules where it's like I just don't touch IPOs on IPO day the only time the only time I've actually successfully traded an IPO on IPO day was ROKU which was Roku and I literally bought one share of Roku on Robinhood for like 20 bucks and I and it was like the first or second day and it ended up pushing maybe it was like two shares but it ended up pushing up like 30 or 40 bucks and I made like $80 on it with like one or two shares. And so I think if you're going to trade IPOs that way, it's fine. But I wouldn't take any, you know, significant size. Uh, if you're a, if you're trying to day trade specifically, like here's the thing though, everybody's different. People I'm sure could probably do it right. Um, I'm just, it's just one of my rules for me. KNDI. Yeah, Mitch likes KNDI. Here, let me get Mitch set up here. Mitch is going to be here. I don't know what time, though. Um, so let me get him set up. I don't know if he's coffee shop trading with us again or what the deal is. There we go. But yeah, Tech, do you actually know JavaScript? JavaScript's mostly a front-end language, though, isn't it? It's like a design language, right? The next thing I'm, like, working on, I'm learning kind of... I'm doing, like, a stack right now of, like, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, React, uh, and something else is what I'm doing right now. TROV. What's up, Skylar? Yeah, TROV kind of coming back down. It's at like 391. What do you guys think Lyft's going to do today? Are you guys bearish or bullish on Lyft today? I think it might actually run some just on short term momentum. From optimism, I think it actually might push up some, but who knows? It could just drop. Bear. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think it might push up short term at the open. I think it IPO'd way too high, and you can see it dropped immediately down to 74. Right, exactly. That's what, I mean... You guys remember what I said on, on Friday. I, I, I thought Lyft would end up tanking on Friday, and it did, but they IPO'd so high that it almost didn't matter, you know. But yeah, they're still technically losing money, and so it's something you got to take into consideration that they are still technically losing money.
You know, I was watching that documentary. Have you guys ever seen it? It's like a mini series. It's called um <clears throat> It's called Valley of the Boom. Valley of the Boom. And it's about how the internet was created and about how Netscape and the internet was created. Um, and before Netscape came around with IPOs, they used to have to have a few years of actual profits before it was considered proper etiquette to IPO their company. Um, <clears throat> the uh, analysts and the advisors for Netscape pushed them to do it early before they were actually super profitable. And, um, you know, Netscape was a huge success on IPO day. And so after Netscape, the kind of uh, etiquette for, um, you know, doing initial public offerings on companies was kind of changed to where they didn't have to wait for profitable quarters to happen. And so now we get stuff like Lyft that are losing money but IPOing still. Oh, dude, I love Billions, Rich. Billions is my show too, man. Do not tell me what happened in season three, though. I have not seen season three. Anybody ruins Billions for me, I will ban you, you know? <laughs> I haven't had the chance to catch up. I'm halfway through season three, and do not tell me what happens, you know? I'm partially joking, Tech. I probably wouldn't ban somebody, but I'd still get kind of mad. You got to start from the beginning, Jay. If you start from the beginning, it's good, man. It's trading related. The dude runs a, a, a trading firm, you know. Super good. He's got the DA chasing after him, trying to get him for insider trading. It's 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 super good, man. Yeah, man. Honestly, I'm still mad that HBO made us wait two years to see season eight. Of course, man. Everybody watches Game of Thrones. Uh, it's called Billions, Corey. It's about a... Uh, it's about a hedge fund uh, owner running from the DA and making uh, sketchy trades, insider trades, and then running and hiding from the DA of New York. Um, it's good. It's trading-based. He runs this hedge fund. He's got all these traders in there. It's called Billions. It's on HBO. It's in the third season now, but you got to start it from the beginning. That's what kind of wraps you in. It's really good. Oh, it's on Showtime. My bad. I thought it was on HBO. All right, guys. We got about 15 minutes left. Yeah, watching Lyft, watching ADXS, uh, MU. <clears throat> oh, you mean um, you mean the, the, the British show, Tech? Or no, Netron, you mean the British show where it takes... Um, it takes a bunch of newbies in the trading world and tries to teach them how to trade. It's uh, based in England or in London, I believe. Yeah, that one's good too. That one's for free though. You can find that one for free on YouTube, I think. A really good one though that I actually really like is called... Um, I think it's called <clears throat> I think it's called Traders Millionaire or Millions by the Minute. Let me see. That one's a really good kind of docu series. Yeah, check out Traders Millions by the Minute. Really good show. Um, started in 2014, but really good show. Kind of documents different traders that are trying to succeed. Uh, that's actually one of my favorite like documentary um, series. Cast? I mean, that's kind of an open question, bro. Sometimes it depends on what my sizing is, man. I 
I mean, last week I, would, I didn't make anything. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of an open question, bro, you know. Yeah, last week was like literally one of the worst weeks I've ever had trading. Oh, shout out to Vize, though, to V-I-I-Z-E from the chat. That dude did reach out to me to make sure I was like, all right, tell me he appreciated my content. You know, just a nice overall message from that dude. So I got to I got to message him back. Uh, no, it's called the one I'm talking about, Jay. It's called uh, Traders Millions by the Minute. Here, I'll, I'll post it here. Really good docu series about trading. You can find some episodes on YouTube, I think, but I think most of them you're going to have to search other places for them. No, it's not on Netflix. But yeah, in that show, they basically like, they basically interview, look at ADXS spike up here, guys. Look at this move. But no, in that show, you they basically interview traders from around the world. Like they interview, some of them are like hedge fund runners. Some of them are like professional retail traders. Some of them are like new traders that are just getting started that are trying to learn trading. And they kind of just interview them. Some of them are, you know, successful traders that are trying to start their own firms, you know, so they just interview a lot of different trading, um, you know, people. It might be cast. I don't know, man. Yeah, I know. I'm looking at AMD as well. I'm always looking at AMD. Uh, AMD and MU are both up. Let's look up, see what's going on with that. I'm not really seeing much. I think it's probably just up on the overall market. Like if you look at the SPY, SPY's up. That's probably what's causing the rest of these to move. I'll be right back, guys. I'll be back in like two minutes.
All right, I'm back. All right, guys, we got about five minutes left. Five minutes. Sorry, it took me a little bit longer. My wife asked me to help her with something. All right, I'm back. Whoa. All right, guys, we got about five minutes left. Five minutes. Sorry, it took me a little bit longer. My wife asked me to help her with something. All right, I'm back. Man, about to go on a never-ending loop of echoes. All right, guys, watching the uh, lift price again, L-Y-F-T, watching... Um, ADXS. ADXS looks interesting. What's up, Isaac? Good morning, bro. Alright, let's do this. Alright guys, wish me luck. Let's hope we have a better week this week than we did last week. Last week was a terrible week for me, but losing weeks will and can and will happen. Like I said though, the good news is that aside from the last two weeks, about a month and a half prior to that was all green. And so I have to keep that in mind. I can't let small time swings really affect me. And uh, yeah, we'll see what happens today, guys. Let's do it. What's up, Cargo? Yeah, ADXS running big, up to 955. What's up, Felix? Honestly, I'm so out of touch with the crypto world, Dustin. I don't even know what Dogecoin is. I don't even know if I'm pronouncing it right. All right, guys, we got three minutes. Three minutes, let's do it. Again, what's everybody's top watch today? What's everybody else looking at? All right, yeah, but like I said, watching LYFT, ADXS. ADX is kind of going crazy here. Uh, Roku, going to keep an eye on Roku as well. MU, AMD, um, APHA, some of the cannabis stocks like CRON, CGC. Uh, going to watch NBEV as well, Cannabis Play. Um, NVIDIA, going to keep an eye on that one as well. So, yeah, CGC, AMD, uh, Lyft. We'll see what we get today. RWLK looks like a reverse split. We got Sorrel up as well, S O R L. Gonna look at NIO maybe, NIO up some as well. Gonna watch NIO. Most of this is just from the overall market. Look at Cron dive right now though. Cron dipping down some here. I'll try to make a video today about playing the moving average crossover as well. We'll see how that goes. And yeah. Let's do this. We got one and a half minutes. One and a half minutes. Yeah, I think it's probably going to drop as well, but who knows, man. Doge. I don't know how to pronounce that, man. What's up, Vice? Hey, brother, appreciate the kind message, man. Appreciate the kind message, Vice. Thanks, brother. Um, sorry I didn't message you back, man. I'll get back to you after the stream. But yeah, appreciate the kind words, brother. Appreciate the support, man. Yes, I did. I did get it, man. Appreciate that, brother. All right, guys, we got less than a minute. Less than a minute. Uh, what strategies are you trying to learn, Jay? All right, guys, 30 seconds. Let's do this. All 
All right, here's the bell, 10 seconds. All right, guys, good luck. Let's do it. All right, there's the bell. All right, so we got lift dropping right off the gate. Lift dropping just dropped about a dollar. Lift immediately dropped over a dollar since it opened. Lift down, AMD down. Are we gonna get a crossover play here? All right, so um, Lyft is down some. Some of this other stuff is rebounding, though, like AMD's back up, MU back up, uh, CGC Cron dropping, though, so I'm, de I'm definitely going to look for some possible fades. Well, Cron just rebounded some. Um, but, yeah, Lyft is down to 73s. Testing 73, just broke under 73. Lyft is absolutely tanking here. NBEV down some. NBEV is down. VKTX. We can look at VKTX here. But CGC down. Cannabis plays down. All right, so here comes the cross here. I got to look at it for AMD. I think I'm probably going to wait for the low of the day break. Problem is, so I, I'm just gonna use 34 as my likely entry. Um, the problem is, they don't fill you for the first few minutes on uh, on a think or swim, and so I'm gonna use 34, 35 as my entry. That's where I would have entered for the cross if they would have filled me, which they haven't yet. Yeah, it just kind of shows. All right, CGC bouncing back up some. CGC bouncing back up some. Getting close to the VWAP here. I really wish they would fill me on my paper trade already for AMD. I mean, it's been two and a half minutes already since the bell. Still no fill here. Well... Okay, at least it gave me the profit. So it did give me the profit, and that's good because now I can take some profit. Or I could have. There we go. Are they really not going to fill me now either? Well, I'm trying to take profits here. No, stop it. Okay, took some profits. I want to take another hundred. It's still not filling me. All right, there's another. What? <laughs> well, I guess that would have worked, but man, paper trading on Think or Swim is not filling me right. So, moving average crossover worked well on AMD this morning. Um, oh, all right, Mitch, got you, bro. Yo, yo, what's up, Mitch? We got Mitch here. Uh, give me a second, guys. Let me get my headphones on. Uh, Mitch's coffee shop trading? Looks like it. Can't hear you, brother. Can't hear you, buddy. Mitch is growing a beard out, though, I see. Mitch has got that beard going. Um, Here, let me get my headphones set up, dude. Yo, yo, yo. Yo, yo, what's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Yo. Yo, what's up, man? Yo, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, wait, let me, uh, I'm still muted. Oh, yeah, I can hear you, brother. Sorry, man, I was muted. All right, all right. Oof. Look at AMR.
Yeah, hold on. I'm going to get you hooked up. Uh, I switched headphones to my wireless ones. Uh, desktop audio speakers. Let's see. There we go. I should do it. All right, say something. No, I didn't do it. No, I still didn't do it. Hold on. I know, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. There we go. Say something. What's going on? What's up? What's up? All right, guys. How's Mitch volume? How's Mitch's volume? All right, AMD right up to the VWAP. I could use 3650 as my risk. Ugh. Let me look. Uh, it's up a ton already. Man, that would have been beautiful. 34. No, not 3650. I could have to use uh, probably 3640 as my risk, which is about seven cents. Small range overall for AMD this morning. Here we go. All right, I got this set up. All right, AMD's up there. Um, like I said, risk would have to be at 3640. I don't hate that risk, so I could probably use like a few hundred shares and look to get down to 3615 if it's, man. All right, well, I missed it on AMD. Heading back down. Got to be quick with these. Uh, CGC dropping too. We got Cron dropping. Lyft is dropping. Um, ADXS is pulling back a little bit here. Here, I can take these moving averages off. So you coffee shop train today, bro? You know it. You know it. <laughs> Yeah, it would have followed through already with AMD on this beautiful fade, too. Missed it, but we got some stuff dropping, so we'll have some more opportunities today, it seems. Uh, look at that VKTX as well. If VKTX gets up to 10 or 6, you could use uh, 10, 15 as your risk. Maybe 10, probably 10, 18. Let me look at VKTX here. Wait, AMD pops right back up. Man, this thing just tricked me. <laughs> Look at that. It popped right back up to where I wanted to get in. As soon as I stopped paying attention to it. All right. Look at that BKTX now, though. I could use uh, roughly this area as my risk. 1019. <laughs> Give myself uh, about a 13, 14 cent risk. And then from 1006 down to 980 or so for a... Uh, 26 cent reward. I like that. That looks good. CGC as well. If it pops up to the VWAP, could use uh, get in at 9.43.35. Risk 33.60s. Reward level 43s. So let's see. Risk would be roughly 23 cents. Reward would be from 37 down to. I mean, you could probably use 95. A little bit better. Be yeah, a beautiful fade for AMD already. Just missed it. Um, Cron is actually back up to the VWAP too. A little bit low volume for Cron though. Beautiful fade for AMD though. Completely missed that one. I'm using the 12 EMA and the 26 SMA for the moving average cross. All right, well, VKTX is right up here. Like I said, my risk is about 13 cents or so. Okay, I didn't get filled. Maybe it's a good thing, I'll wait. Man, AMD followed through perfect though. I wish I would've caught that one look at that CGC now if CGC climbs all the way back up there I'll consider that but yeah look at this beautiful follow with the fade on that AMD
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. Nick, I'm waiting for sure. But yeah, I'm kind of, this is the one I missed, man. AMD Perfect Fade. Lift is bouncing back a little bit here. Lift, bouncing back a little bit. At this point, I'm looking at CGC some. Um, if CGC can climb back to 40, uh, 4320s, I like the 4360 risk. It's just, uh, just a little bit higher than I typically take. It's about 35 cents. And, but the reward level would be from like 4320s down to 4280s maybe. Maybe 42.70 or so right here would be decent. But pretty fade on AMD. NBEV looks interesting here as well. NBEV. You upset 522. It's just a smaller range, though. You could use, I don't know, 2526 as your risk. So five cents, and then from 22 down to 14, about eight cent reward. Just a small range. CGC dropping. Plus the volume's a little bit low for MBEV. Looking at Puma Biotechnology, PBYI. What's the symbol? PBYI. But I think I might have missed it already. I wanted to take it in the 40s and 50s. Oh, there it is. Have to risk a good amount. You have to risk like 30 or 40 cents in this play. So I was only going to come in with 100 shares. What do you think about Roku? Good, good move to the bottom if it does go down. Yeah, or not Roku. What do you think about uh, NBEV? That one's kind of climbing up. And AMD just tanking here. Still mad I didn't take it. <laughs> yeah, Mitch is at the coffee shop, Isaac. If Kron can climb back to the 1840s, I'll consider it now. I could use... Uh, Eighteen fifty seven, maybe eighteen fifty six is my risk. So my risk is like eleven, twelve cents. My reward is from forty five down to probably twenty five, maybe twenty for two to one on Kron if it can climb back up there. Is there going to be a fire festival too, Nick? Hmm. 
Well, a lot of fades today. Um, we got a PBYI, the one Mitch was talking about, NBEVs kind of doing it. Some of them just never quite got to the view up. But they don't all look terrible, so we got a few options to at least look at this morning. Specifically, uh, AMD if it climbs back. Right now I'm looking at AMD, Klon if it can climb back, CGC if it can climb back. So we got some options. If the VWAP can drop enough to make, to be uh, underneath the previous day's close, so I can have some added resistance, I would like that a little bit more. And so let's see, where's the close? Oh, damn it. I missed the one that I wanted to really get. <laughs> Which one? Uh, BB. Blackberry. Yeah, I should have nailed that one. Just took my eye off of it for like two or three minutes, and it went right to the VWAP. Perfect oh, wow. entry at 10. Yeah, we're getting some face today. We should have a few other. Options. That was easy. I'm like in Cron. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm done with them. They already they already did their, their VWAP fades. I think now you'll be looking for extend, extension. And they've already made that third move down. Uh, you get into that point where they could be reversed. But, hey. I think it, they should have been hit a little earlier. ACB, Crod. AMD was beautiful. AMD was like perfect. I mean, the good news about it, though, is that if it does get up there, you have a very obvious risk level. Like if AMD gets up there, you could use the previous fade as your risk at 33. And so your risk is 13 cents. Reward is 30, 30 something, 32 cents or so. So I don't hate that one. I like Cron because um, I can use the VWAPs right around the previous day's close, and so it should have some added resistance there. But yeah, is there going to be a fire festival too? I saw the documentary on uh, Netflix. There shouldn't be. Looking for a VWAP reject here on Levi. Levi, VWAP reject. CGC starting to climb. It's just about where to set risk now. I'd have to do 43.25. That gives me a 21 cent risk. And I could use the 42.50 as my reward target. So I don't hate that on CGC. It's just about whether I want to take CGC or Kron. You know. Yeah, looking at AMD2. I got a lot of options today. Um, AMD, I could, I know very obviously where the risk is for AMD. We also have Cron that's getting up there too. It's just let me look to see which one Cron dropped yesterday, ran the day before. I like Cron a little bit more. Uh, AMD is up the last two days. Maybe if it'll actually get there. CGC too. I don't know if any of them will actually make it up there. They still got a little bit of ways to climb. Yeah, my miss for the day would be that AMRM trade. I would have taken it. I was trying to log into the the chat here, but AMRN that was a good one. Super extension after. A couple of days of super weakness. Yeah. What do you think about lift? APHA is also at the view up too. 
Uh, looking at Kron, like I said, Kron, I could use that 1855 level as my risk, so about 13 cents. And then 1820 is my reward, so uh, about 22 cents. All right, I'm getting ready to possibly take Kron if we can get up there to the 1840s. Also, CGC doesn't look terrible. About a 25 cent reward, and so probably 200 or so shares of CGC if it gets up there. All right, Kron's up to 1840s. Let's see if we can get just the spreads bad. It's three cents. Needs to even out some. Yeah, I don't know if it's actually going to make it. 38. It's just a four cent spread, five cent spread. It's just too much. It's going to hurt. My risk reward is already cutting it pretty close. I mean, it's two to one. But um, with the spread, it needs to even out a little bit more. It's at 37. Nines. Needs to get up to 41 on the ask at least. Three hundred shares of Cron. A little bit worse fill than I wanted to, but I'm risking. Uh, let's see, my entry is thirty-seven, so I'm risking about twenty cents or so, about sixty bucks maybe. Hopefully that previous day's close will hold, and uh, it'll keep uh, it'll do me a little bit better. All right, we're down to 36. Let's see if we can follow through here. Cron dropping down a little bit, that should help us. CGC dropping down, never quite got the chance to get up to the VWAP, unfortunately. See if CGC should drag this down if um, it continues to drop. Let's see the rest of the cannabis plays. BPTH, that one's still running. Thirty sevens, thirty fours. There we go. All right, so let's see if Kron actually follows through here. I think another level it's got to break is right, like roughly right here at thirty ones. Let's take a hundred off just to bank a little bit here. Let the rest work, just in case it does bounce.
I'm using a little bit smaller sizing here because it's been a tough few weeks. I got to scale down to uh, protect myself. We'll see if we get a nice drop. CGC breaking lows here. That should drag Kron down some. I'm going to hold it though and let it work. All right, might be looking to short Cisco here. CSCO, right? Yep. There's 29s. Let's see if we get the break. There's the break. Good. 27s. Let's see if it actually fades down to 1820s. That's kind of the goal here. So yeah, CGC's bouncing back some. I think that's kind of dragging some of these up too. Luckily though, I can pretty much do it break even now if it gets over 37 or so. I'll probably do it if it gets over 840 and cut it slightly break even. Maybe let it test the previous day's close at 43 for a small loss, but. Let's just hope uh, CGC ends up following it down and pushing it back down some. I think that's the big thing. It just depends on what CGC is ultimately going to do. I think a lot of these are following CGC and the other cannabis plays. And so the more CGC moves down or up, the more these follow it. And it's back down to 30. CGC dropping. Let's hope CGC breaks the lows and just keeps getting hit. Let's see if we can find the catalyst on this while we're waiting here, though. Something's going on with CGC. I mean, it was overall pretty decent news, all things considered, for CGC. It's just weird. Yeah, there's 30s. All right, you gotta be careful watching Cisco here. So Kron is at 1830s. We'll see what happens here. It's not a, I think uh, it's following CGC pretty closely. Oh, what, uh, you're in Cisco. Sorry, bro. Uh, yeah. What's your risk? Uh, it's, it's right here, 60. Okay. Nine-foot risk. 
try to get this to crack down. I'm gonna watch it here though. It's holding the 10 line. Might be just a quick stop out. Later, Jay. Have a good day, brother. Yep. Quick stop out. I'm out. That out there. Squeeze on Cisco. Yeah, I got squeezed up. I mean, that was the right exit, I think. Yeah. I think it's just a forced trade. Just a forced, uh, forced trade there. Not really finding anything. Get impatient. Give somebody up. That's what happens. It happens, brother. Don't stress it, man. Yeah, just getting impatient here. Nothing on there. I should just end the day, but you know how it gets. Monday, you get excited about trading, and there's really nothing out there right now. Monday, honestly, is usually pretty good for trading, all things considered, but the market has just been so soulless, like just dull lately, man. I mean, we've had to lift IPO, but for the most stuff, man, it's just been, you know, I know I see a lot of other traders and streamers and, and YouTubers have been getting hit in these weeks, and it's just because the volume's low, man. The volume has just been uh, not ideal for day trading. Spy just spiked up, though. Spy did just spike up. I'm holding it to my levels on Cron. We'll see if it eventually breaks, but she's been consolidating for the last five minutes or so. Thirty-one. Thirty. Let's see if we could finally get a breakdown here. Twenty-nines. There we go. Twenty-eight. Sevens. Twenty-six. There we go. That's a little bit better. Twenty-threes. Twenty-ones. Beautiful. I'm gonna take another half off there. Just let to see if the rest breaks the low of the day here. That's what I'm kind of shooting for now. Small trade, but green is good. Let's see if it actually breaks the lows here now. Nice fade. I, I really like this one because... Uh, you know, the a lot of people don't realize how important the previous day's closing price is. It's ultimately what dictates whether a move's going to be a red to green move or not. And so whenever the previous day's close is like right above my entry, it gives it some added resistance, kind of pushing it back down if it does try to move over that. And so, you know, for that reason, I like this move. <laughs> was thinking about here VKTX, VKTX. Didn't get my entry. My entry would have been 1020, 1021. Uh, probably should have taken it. Uh, just a little hesitant since it's above the VWAP. Yeah. I was looking at that one earlier, and the risk I gave myself when VKTX was 1020. And so that level seems to be holding well. It looked like I would have probably gotten stopped out on it, but it seems to be holding. Oh, yeah. There we go. Hold on, there's a drop on Cron. Beautiful break here. Let's see if it holds down here now. It made a push. It's down to 19s. 18s. I'm just going to let it go. It's beautiful follow through. There's 18s. Let's see if it really makes this push here. Yep, ACB getting hit hard. So you might get it down. It's just about whether it actually holds under that previous low and then that previous low turns into resistance. Like when we see this, we want to see this level hold as resistance now. And so it's got to stay under. It looks like it's probably going to rebound back, but that's what we want to see hold. I like the follow through, but... Unfortunately, it just bounced back. I'm going to let this level here act as my risk. Now 25. All right, I'm out. Hit my risk. That's it for 
That one. Small gain. I'll take it. Just nice to be in the green panel. Uh, we did get some follow through though, so it's good. Yeah, good a little job. annoyed that I didn't take that VKTX. That would have been the first profit there. Already taken about $100 off there. Yeah, my entry was a uh, 1837. I let it test the low of the day. I wanted to see if it would actually break down. But uh, like I said, like a lot of these cannabis stocks kind of follow each other. It might have faked me out. Who knows? But a lot of these cannabis stocks follow each other. And um, and so I'm looking at CGC, which is kind of the bigger mover. And yeah, so it would have stopped me out right there. So glad that Thinkorswim's actually lagging a little bit here. You can see the ask is at 1827, the bid's at 1825. So Thinkorswim's lagging a little bit. But uh, yeah, small trade. I mean, like I said, with how the last few weeks have been, I'm not mad for taking smaller sizing. I think I just have to protect my account a little bit. And uh, green is good, so I'll take it. We're also getting a squeeze up on some of the cannabis plays, so. Just being a little bit late to every move today. Uh, I was looking at MU there at the VWAP, but just turned away right now. Not giving me a chance though. If you wanna, if you have the cojones, man, uh, look at Lyft. That one, that one kills right there. Look at uh, Lyft, man. It's still not there though, and it's been holding way too much at the bottom at seventies. Yeah, that's what I said. If you have the cojones, that one IPO'd on Friday. Scary. I'm not worried about the IPO, but the 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 pattern's not there. Yeah. Mu was right there. Oh, Cron just faked me out. There it goes. Why, why'd you get out of Kron? Uh, Because it tested the low and then immediately squeezed back up. And so I gave myself the 1825 level. Ah, should have been break even on the rest, brother. I mean, break even would have, you know, I only had 100 shares left. And so I didn't want to let that last 100 shares ruin it for me. I mean, I listen, man, after the last few weeks, I just want to have a green trade, man. <laughs> the last few weeks have been terrible. And so it's one of those times where it's like, it's been really a, a frustrating two weeks for me. And so I just want to get a green trade in. And that's kind of what it is. It'll, I'll probably take a little bit to uh, get back to my normal self after the past few weeks. It's just been brutal for me, man. All right, Cargo, later, brother. Have a good day, man. He says, thanks, I'm more out from the emotions, from options. You there? Yeah, what's up? Yeah, man. Um, nah, man, but uh, yeah, I just feel like it should have been break even on the rest. Yeah, I mean, you know, maybe so. Like I said, though, Remember, it's just the way the patience. last few weeks... Huh? Patience pays off, man. Patience is what pays off. For sure. I should have taken that MU. I'm looking for it to bounce back in that area, but might not get a chance. What did AMD, MU and AMD typically follow each other? What's AMD doing? Oh, AMD got right back up there. That would have been pretty fade too. Yeah, MU was the one I was looking at. Uh, There'll be other rooms, man. You know, AMRN. Yeah, just let me go. I like AMRN because if AMRN climbs back to twenty twenty five, you could use that twenty that previous high at twenty forty two as your risk. It looks decent with like so that's like a seventeen cent risk, and then the reward is like from twenty five cents so twenty five cents. The reward is like fifty five cents. So you got a 17 cent risk, 55 cent reward on AMRN. I don't hate that one. Like I said, this is what I mean, guys, what I'm talking about. So like if you, if it's kind of faded a little bit once already, you can use that previous high right here as your risk. And then 
if you get in it, if it climbs back there, you could set, you know, 80 as a reward target down here. What did AMRN? And AMRN is up a lot yesterday, so it's got some momentum on the downside, probably. Uh, VTX, VKTX, I'm just like, lowered. I should have taken that 1021. That was the trade right there. Yeah, I kind of felt that way about AMD this morning. Like, AMD, I, one thing I'm noticing, though, is that I have to be, like, ready in the morning because a lot of times, like, what I do, like, I can notice this about myself, is that a lot of times, like, the first five minutes of the market open, I'm just kind of hanging out. I'm not really looking for setups. Um, I, I think I have to be ready because, like, AMD's first fade happened right at 35. And so I think I just need to be ready and, like, have all the stocks up ready to, you know, get into the trade if I need to. Because lately, it's kind of been the same thing with me. Like, I'll miss it by, like, five seconds. And by the time – and it'll just pop up there quick. And so by the time I look at it, it's down and the risk reward isn't as good. And so I just don't get into it. I have to sit there and just watch it follow through. And so I think I just got to be ready. You know, yeah. Be a little bit more. Um... I'm telling you, Blackberry was the one I should have stayed on and just waited and waited. I knew that one was going to pop back to be wet near 10. And it really could have been a nice winner. 30 cent winner with not even a chance of it coming back. For sure. Uh, that could have been a very easy $300 winner. I'm still kind of looking at AMRN. I mean, AMRN's climbing back up there, and it's got that 2042 risk. It had a big uh, green day Friday, too, so it's up some. Yeah, I think it's just late for that one. I would have traded that one earlier there. Yeah. I mean, I just I, I always don't mind using it. Kind of the same thing I did with Cron. Like, you can use the previous flag as your risk. Not flag, you can use the previous bounce as your risk at 2040. Well, while we got a second here, guys, if anybody is interested in using the same uh, the same broker that Mitch and I use, go check out TradeNet. For the time being, you can get TradeNet packages for 20% off the intro. Um, and so just to tell you a little bit about TradeNet, the way it works is you pay for a package. There's no deposit. You're actually paying for that package. And with that, with the intro package, you get 14K in buying power. So you get 14,000 in buying power with a $700 max loss. There's no PDT rule. You can day trade as much as you want on their funded accounts. New small sizing commissions are pretty cheap, all things considered. And so if you want to go check them out, um, like I said, if I use less than 300 shares, my commissions are like three or four dollars total for a complete round trip. And so, plus, you don't have to locate shorts. Anything that's tradable is shortable. And with that, you get the TradeNet course, the TradeNet trading course. You get a month of their chat room, and you also get uh, a free month of our classes as well. So if you do sign up through my link, you get a free month of our classes as well. And so reach out to me and let me know if uh, you have signed up through my link. But yeah, like I said, if anybody wants to use that broker, no PDT rule. Um, a lot of other good things about them. There's not many penny stocks available to trade, and so you do want to understand that. But yeah, if anybody wants to check them out. Um, I'll post this link here. Yeah, usually the intro account's 500. If you go through my link, it's 200, or it's uh, not 200, it's 399. And so, pretty cheap, all things considered. Go check it out if you want to help support the channel. Uh, that is if uh, that's for donations. I haven't honestly. I haven't even messed with it. You can see it's it says negative three thousand one hundred and ninety three hours to go. So I haven't even updated it in like months. And so yeah. 
Appreciate the sub as well, go though, guys. Steve and Charles. Yeah, Mitch and I day trade live on stream every weekday morning. Um, <clears throat> we day trade live on stream, and so if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and help support us. You can also click the like button on this video if you appreciate what we're doing here and appreciate this content. Uh, Lyft is right up to the VWAP, guys. Lyft is right up to the VWAP. Like I said, I don't really have the guts to do it. Um, we'll see what we get here. My headphones die. There we go. Appreciate the sub, Glor. Welcome, brother. Appreciate it. All right, I'm looking at lift here. Let's see if I can get one, a proper entry here. Yeah, if you want to share your screen, I'll throw you up, bro. I got it on the phone. It's got to give me a little bit. Okay, no stress. All right, so yeah, Mitch is looking at lift here with the VWAP fade. Order out right now at 72. Just be careful with your share size because the range is huge, man. It's 100 shares. And I wanted to get in at 72, slightly above VWAP. You know, jumping on here, I'd have to risk off of 72. I was hoping to risk off of 72 30s. Let's get into that price point where you could take some of it, maybe add to your share sizing. But I'm going to keep an eye on it. Yeah. She's got a big range. I mean, I don't think 73 is a bad risk. It's the low of that first opening range candle. And then you could do like 70 as your reward target, maybe. About one to one, actually, though. Let's see. It would have to, if it gets up to 72, you could do 73 as your risk for a dollar and then reward target of 70 for two to one. That doesn't look bad. What did Cron end up doing? Yeah, Kron followed through some. Not a ton, though. Yeah, PULM is just going crazy today, guys. PULM. We got Hero here. He's back. Yeah, you look at PULM though, guys. If you could trade these pennies, P. P U L M is really running here. So what's everybody else watching right now? I know PULM is running. Um, let's see. We also have uh, Lyft at the VWAP. CGC might be pulling back to the VWAP some as well. So CGC doesn't really look bad, especially with like how rangy it looks right now with CGC.
Hmm. CGC is climbing pretty close to the VWAP here. You know, depending on where you want to set your risk, I think 43 is a tight risk for CGC too, like if it gets up there. And then if you get in at around 80, your risk is like 20 cents. And then your reward target could at least be down to like 50, which is 30 cents. But probably I would rather do 33 or so. And so your risk to reward is like 20 cents to 50 something cents or 50 cents. And so that's not terrible for CGC. I don't hate that one. Plus it also has lots of resistance above it at 88. It's got the whole dollar as your risk, which is pretty tight. And then... You got a little bit of room above it, so not bad. NBEB pulling back to the VWAP here as well, but yeah, CGC's up there. HEAR. Turtle Beach. I'm actually wearing a pair of Turtle Beach. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm not wearing my Turtle Beach this morning. I'm wearing my Bose Wireless, but I have a pair of Turtle Beach that I wear sometimes. Here is OTC now. This is Turtle Beach, right? Or is the ears Turtle Beach? No, it's here. Yeah, here's spiking up. So we'll see what Lyft ends up doing here today, guys. Sorry, yeah, let me get this out the way. Yeah, there goes uh, CGC. Never quite got to the VWAP, but you might have been able to get in there. Somebody might have been able to get in there. NBEB, 518s. NBEB is up to the VWAP as well. Um, and Lyft is still up there. All right, guys. So, yeah, we got CGC right around the VWAP. We got Lyft still kind of hanging out there. Kron slowly starting to climb back up, but the VWAP's dropping a little bit for that one. <clears throat> uh, like I said, CGC's right up there. Uh, let's see what a few of these other ones are doing. 
AMD faded twice. Beautiful second fade too. All right, so yeah, CGC's right up there. We'll see if uh, Lyft fades down here. You still there, Mitch? Thoughts on a good swing for tomorrow? Um, I mean, I don't... I'm not, like, the most... Uh, I don't swing trade that often. And so I just don't want to tell you the wrong answer, to be honest. So, you know, who knows? When I do swing, it's mostly like options, like put options that I hold for like a month or so. All right, AMD slowly climbing back. Like I said, we got lift right up there at the VWAP. CGC still kind of battling that out here. We'll see what we get with some of these. Um, Mitch, you there, bro? You might have lost Mitch. Appreciate the subs also, Derek. Thanks, brother. Glor, Charles, Steve. Appreciate the subs today, guys. Welcome. Like I said, we day trade live on stream every weekday. And so if you want to watch us, you know, hit that subscribe button. Oh, I know we also had somebody asking me about the scanners that I'm using. I'm actually using Trade Ideas scanners, uh, and so I can post that link here as well. Shout out to Trade Ideas. They're cool enough to let me stream these scans every day. Uh, sorry, bro. Here. There you go. That should be better now. Um, but no, like I said, uh, shout out to trade ideas. Yeah. PULM looking good. Um, but no, shout out to trade ideas for being cool enough to let me stream their scans every day. If anybody wants to check out trade ideas, which is the scanner that I'm using, I'll post that link here as well. Um, and yeah, basically super customizable, super dynamic scanners allow you to do a lot of different stuff. Um, build your own custom scans, just a lot of different stuff. It's kind of like heaven for me as a day trader where it shows me what's moving. You know, I can pick any type of scanner I want. They have a ton of pre-selected scans as well. And so if you're interested in checking out trade ideas, you can go to this link here. I just posted, which is the scanners that I'm using. Go check them out. Really cool company, um, super dynamic, super customizable scanners. All right, so Lyft did follow through some. It's falling back down here. Uh, AMD's right back up to the VWAP as well. You can see uh, AMD here is right here at the VWAP. Or no, sorry, that's CGC. CGC's right at the VWAP too. 
but AMD is climbing back up here. For, it would, this would be the third fade of the day on AMD, and so I don't know if I necessarily trust it as much. Um, but we'll see where it goes. You know, the, that is something to look at. And like I always say, if it already faded once, you can use the high of that previous fl uh, fade as your risk. In this case, it would be 26.19, and so your risk would be roughly, what, 14 cents, 13 cents. And so, uh, you know, you got a 13 cent risk and a pretty, you know, decent reward target down at the 25.85 area. And so, you know, your risk is about 30, or your reward is about 30 cents. All right, guys. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get into anything else. We do see a few other things moving here. Um, let me look. Appreciate the sub, man. Whoever subbed, appreciate the sub, Sean. Welcome, brother. Appreciate it. So yeah, I mean, we'll see what happens here. Like I said, we got a few different fades. Um, overall, we got CGC pulling out. We got MBEV that followed through pretty nicely. We got Cron climbing right back up here, and so Cron is climbing right back up here. It's at eighteen twenty fives now, and again, I mean, you could use that eighteen. 30s area 18 really about 1840 is your risk you got about 14 cent risk uh maybe not the best risk reward obviously for this point maybe you use a little bit smaller risk area of like i don't know let's see from 18 through 7 up to 1827 or up to 1833 yeah that would be good risk reward It'll be about 25 cent risk or 25 cent reward with like a nine cent risk. That's pretty good. Almost three to one for Cron is what I'm looking at. If anybody's wondering, um, All right, guys. I don't know if I'm gonna see anything else that I really that really looks interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened to Mitch. Maybe Mitch left. Um, I don't know what happened to him. But anyways, remember, guys. Uh, if you're interested in using the same broker that Mitch and I use, you can check out Trade TradeNet. 
Um, the way it works is you pay for a package, no deposits, you're actually paying for a package and with that you get a certain amount of buying power. Um, like the base package is the intro package. It, right now they have a sale going on where you can get it for $3.99 and with that you get $14,000 in buying power in your funded account but there is a $700 max loss. Um, you know, you can day trade as much as you want. There's no PDT rule on the funded account through trade debt. And, uh, you know, commissions are pretty cheap, all things considered. If you use less than 300 shares, commissions are like 3 or $4 for a total round trip. Um, and so not bad. Anything that's tradable is shortable. There aren't many penny stocks. Most penny stocks are not tradable. But, um, like I said, anything that is tradable is shortable. Like, for instance, even though Lyft IPO'd Friday on on IPO day, I was allowed to short Lyft, so I could have shorted Lyft on IPO day. I can short it today, even though it just IPO'd on Friday. And so there are definitely some positives for that. But like I said, if you are interested in checking them out, and uh, you know, with if you go through my link, you get a free month of our classes. Um, but uh, you also get you know Trade Nets course. You get access to for a month if you go through my link to their uh, to their. Um, day trading chat room you get a bunch of different stuff plus like i said you get a month of our classes as well if you want to check that out you can go through this link here and i'll post that here but anyways guys that's probably it for today um also, guys, go check out our classes. You know, uh, I know I was in a slump the last few weeks, but Mitch has been doing pretty well overall the last few weeks looking at PBYR. And uh, like we said, we just try to give traders a cheap option instead of paying thousands of dollars for courses. And so if you're interested in checking us out, um, you can go to our site here. Uh, like I said, even if you don't want to pay for a package, or even if you don't want to pay for any of our classes or anything like that, we do have a free strategy section here where it has short patterns, long patterns, it has a strategy, strategy video library. But really, guys, we try to just be the cheapest people around. You know, you can choose your package. Uh, we are, it even says on this page, like, look, we are not gurus. We can't guarantee you're going to make money. Our goal is just simply to offer a cheap option instead of having to pay thousands of dollars for courses. If you're a new trader looking to learn, we're happy to help and we're, you know, we're here to help and we're just trying to give people a cheap option. And really, I think we probably have more content than everybody else too. Like even day trading concepts, we literally have over 50 hours of content, like over 50 hours of content here. I got to sign in here. And so we just have tons of content for $15 a month. It's actual days worth of content. Like I said, it's like 50 hours or so of content. It really, it's a little bit over 50 hours. It's like 55 hours of content, but it's just a lot of content, guys. So that's what I'm saying. If you're interested in checking that out, uh, I can show you guys what it kind of looks like here. Let me find it. All right, so yeah. So, whoa, wrong one. Uh... So like this says here, you can see it's just actual days worth of content. This is just one section called day trading concepts. We have understanding triangles, VWAP strategies, back testing, setting up screens, trading using support and resistance, understanding gaps, understanding ranges, following the market, scaling. We just got a ton of different classes here, just lots of different classes. That's just one section. We also have, uh, like I said, we also have risk reward here. Um, you know, we have, uh, trading psychology as well we just got a lot of different con you know a lot of content we also do three live classes every single week um, unless something crazy comes up but we typically make it up well and so we also do three live classes every single week um, on a range of different subjects and plus you get access to our tr member discord as well and so we just got a lot of content for 15 bucks a month we just try to be the cheapest around and uh, if you're interested in checking that out, it's a really good way to help support the channel. If you want to help support us, you can go to this link. Um, you know, all of this is just so we can continue to uh, continue to offer this live stream for free every day. And so, you know, we just try to be cheap, give people a cheap option. You know, most of the information that the gurus sell is available for free online. And so, you know, most of this stuff is available for free online. And so, you know, it's it's... It's just you don't have to pay thousands of dollars to learn how to trade. Most people teach themselves, and uh, you know you can learn for very cheap on our end as well. And so if you're interested in checking that out, go to that link I just posted, 
And uh, yeah, that's it for today, guys. Uh, I'll go ahead and play the promo video. And uh, hold on one second, let me see. All right, guys, that's it for today. Uh, Mitch said he's looking at PBYI. We'll see how that goes. I should post an update video or recap video of today, so be on the lookout for that. Like I said, hit that like button, guys, if you want to help support the channel. Um, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Mitch and I day trade live or stream every weekday morning. Uh, and so if you want to watch us trade live every weekday, hit that subscribe button, and you'll be able to come check us out and join us every morning. So uh, we hope you'll see you again tomorrow. And uh, oh, Mitch says he's in at 35.52. See, so Mitch is in right here. Risk 35.70. So his risk is right around here. Not bad. What's your shear size? But yeah, like I said, uh, Okay, Mitch is going to share his screen, it looks like. Yo, yo. Checking out Mitch's beard here, man. Mitch has got a beard today. What's up, what's up? You got a beard, huh? You growing your beard out, bro? Yeah, the beard's <laughs> out, bro. The beard's out. <laughs> see if I can flip this thing. Okay. Or whatever. Let's see right here. There you go. All right, okay. guys. This is my trade here. I don't know if you guys can see that well. Yeah. Oh. It's a little fuzzy, but. Yeah. We got a realized 93 here. I'm just going to stick to this trade and see if I can go ahead and get into my green. I'm already green a little bit, probably about 20 bucks. I'm just going to hold the rest of the shares. Got in here at 35.52 with 500 shares. Was risking 20 cents, about, about 18 cents on the trade. And. Gonna go ahead and stick to the trade. Next profit should be at 35s, and then I'll hold that last little bit of shares to see if we can get all the way down to 3450s or 34s. Nice work, brother. But Congrats, at least man. gonna end up another green day at the coffee shop. Killing it lately, man. I need to find where that yeah. coffee shop is, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm on that. Uh, I think uh, now seven days straight green at coffee shop trading. So. All right, man. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta find me. A, I gotta find me a coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> but congrats, man! All right. All right, guys, we just hold on to this trade. 
I don't know if you want to end stream, but yeah, I'm gonna probably gonna hold on, see if I can uh, get a little bit more out of this trade, see if we can get that out of the web. Yeah, man, just uh, just send me a picture of it. I can upload it to the uh, community section of the stream yeah. so people can see it afterwards, yeah. brothers. So I'll let it keep working. Up about fifty dollars, unrealized, but I'm gonna let the rest work. See what happens. You guys have a great one. Like always, stick to the right risk and reward. And if you get in the right trade, you can get yourself right back into the green. Yes, sir. Good job, Dad. Good job, dude. Nice work, All buddy. All right, guys. Later, guys. Take it easy. Later, have a good bro. one.